Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. That is how does a random number generator work? So we know all these programming languages, we know C, C++, Java, Python. And if I ask you to write a code in C++ to generate a random number between 1 to 10, then this is what you're going to do. You're going to use either rand or srand and then you're going to write your code and you're going to generate a random number between 1 to 10. But what if I ask you to generate a random number without using any inbuilt function? So how are you going to do that? So you might be getting stuck, especially if you don't understand how a random function works. So what goes on behind the scenes when you call an inbuilt random function? So let's get into that. Let's see and understand what happens and what goes on when you call an inbuilt random function either in C, C++, Java, Python, whatever it is. And let's see how a random number is actually generated. So before we go any further, let's first understand what is a random number. So a random number is something that changes each time. So whenever you generate a random number, a new number is generated and there is no correlation between the new number and the previously generated random number. And apart from this, you have no way of correctly predicting the newer random number. So that's how a random number work. A few examples of a random number would be like when you roll a die, then a random number will be there or the chances of there being rain tomorrow is random. So when we generate a random number through a computer or through code, the first thing to ask, is it really random or does it only appear to be random? So once we find that, so if it is genuinely random, then there's no nothing to learn, right? It's random. We cannot do anything about it. But if it only appears to be random, then that means that there is some algorithm behind it. There is some working behind it that we don't know. So that's what, the case is when we code something, when we use an inbuilt random function, then the number that is generated is not really random. It is something that is pseudo random. Okay, so so far we've figured out that the random number generated by our programming languages are not really random, but it's indeed a sequence of numbers that's generated using an algorithm. So if it's a sequence of number, then meaning that the nth number xn is generated from the x and minus 1th number meaning that the next number is generated by the previous number. That's how a sequence works, right? So each number is generated from its previous number, meaning that there should be a starting element, right? So there should be a starting element and based on that starting element, the whole sequence is created. Okay, and that starting element is known as the seed of our random number generator. Okay, so the starting element will be there. Based on that, we'll put some algorithm and then we'll create the next element, then again the next element, then again the next element and the sequence will go on like that. Okay, so what if I keep the seed same? So suppose I uh, run the code and I keep the seed same. So the output will be the same, right? Because if the seed is same, then the next element will be the same, the next element will be the same, and the whole sequence will be same. So if I keep the seed as same, then the same sequence will come each time. Let me show you that. So this is a code which I'm doing using uh, random. I'm creating 10 random numbers from 1 to 10. Okay, so let's see what this gives me. So here, basically, uh, if I don't put any seed here, I haven't given any seed. So if I don't give any seed, then a default seed is there and that seed will be the same. So if you don't give any seed, then a default seed will come be same. Okay, so let's see the output. So output is 36753629 which is some random number. So it looks like some random number. Now let me run the same code again, right? So if I run the same code again, then again, I'm getting the same sequence. And again, if I run the same code, then again, I'm getting the same sequence. So this is not random. Okay, this is the same sequence coming all over again, because we're getting a default seed. We haven't given any seed explicitly, but we're using the default seed, which remains the seed. So if the seed is the same, the output will be the same. So for creating a random number generator, we want the seed to be different. So the seed should be, seed should be different each time. So each time I run it, the seed should be different. Otherwise, if everyone has the same seed and everyone is running the same program, then all of them will be getting the same output, right? So there would be nothing random about that. So the seed should be different each time based on that. Uh, new numbers will be, will be generated and the new numbers will be different each time so it can actually appear random so meaning that the seed should be different each time so seed should be constantly changing seed should be constantly changing 
So how do we make seed to be constantly changing? What value of seed should I put so that it's different each time? I cannot put one, two, three. I cannot put any constant number. So very simple. You put seed as your time. So time is constantly changing, right? And in our programming languages, we have method of getting the time. And the time will always be different. So if I run a code right now, then the time will be different. And then if I run the code one second after, again, the time will be different. And if I run the code later on, again, the time will be different. So time will always be increasing. Time is never going to be the same. So that's why I keep the seed as time. And this is what our programming languages do. So in C, C++, Java and all, the, the seed is generally given as time, which will always be changing. Let me show you that as well. So here I'll be putting seed explicitly. So let's see that. So using srand, I can declare a seed. So I'll say seed is time of zero. So the seed will be given as the time. And now let's see the output. So the output is something like 0718, something like that. Let's run it again. And again, we're getting random numbers, but this time the output is different because the time changed, right? Okay, so the seed we have seen, which is the starting element of our sequence. So seed is nothing but the starting element of our sequence. That's quote unquote random. So now you might ask, how is the, how are the rest of the numbers generated, right? So I get it, the seed is there, but how are the rest of the numbers generated? So let's see that. Let's see the actual algorithm which generates the rest of the number, which is actually pretty simple. So let's see that. So this was my seed, which was my starting element. And that, like I said, xn will be xn minus one, uh, something like that. It will be a function of xn minus one. So my next element will be generated by putting some uh, formula or running some algorithm on my previous element. So let's see what that formula is. Let's see what that algorithm is. So that is something known as LCG. So LCG is nothing but linear congruential generator, which seems to be complex, but it's very simple. What this tells me is that if I want a new number from a previous number, then the formula to do that is just simply do this. New element will be old, ele old element and then multiply with that with some number, then add some number to that and take modulo of that with some number. So this is for the range. So I can keep this 10 if I want the range of my random numbers to be between 10. I can keep this 2 to the power 32 if I want the range of my numbers to be 2 to the power 32. So the new element is generated from the old element, multiplying that with some number and then adding some number to that, then taking the mod of that with some number. And these numbers will be constant. Okay, so the number, uh, number one and then number two and then number three, these will remain constant. Okay. So these will be constant in our formula and based on the old element, I'll be creating the new element and then initially the old element will be the seed. So let's see this one. Okay, so with this knowledge, let's try to create our own random number generator, which will actually be very bad, but it will be the same thing that the library of the programming languages use. So basically the formula, like I said, is nothing but xn is equal to xn minus one into a plus b modulo, modulo m, where a, b and m are constant numbers. So let's keep it simple. Let's keep the value of a as three, value of b as five and value of m as 10. And let's keep our seed as two. So seed will be two. And now let's try to create a sequence using this formula, using this uh, algorithm. Okay. So initially the number will be uh, two, which will be the seed. Let's generate the new number. So new number will be two into three, six plus five, 11, 11 modulo 10. That will be one. This is my new element in the sequence. And then let's try to create the new number using one. So one into three plus five, eight. So eight modulo 10, that will be eight. So this is the new number in the sequence. So you can see that two, one and eight, it seems pretty random, right? It doesn't seem like there's any correlation between the numbers. And now let's create the new, uh, another number using eight. So eight into eight, 24, 24 plus five, that will be 29 and 29 modulo 10 will be nine. So the sequence we've got so far is two, one, eight, nine, which like I said, seems to be pretty random, but now let's try to create another random number. So I get nine into a 27 plus five, 32, 32 modulo 10 will give me two. Okay. So now I've got the same number that I got before. And now let's try to generate the next number. So next number will be again, two into three, six, six plus five, 11, 11 modulo 10 will again give me one. So you can see that the sequence, sequence is now repeating itself, right? So we got two, one, eight, nine. So far that was good. It seemed to be random, but again, I got two, 
and then again i got 1 and then again i got 8 and then again i got 9 and it will keep on repeating itself so like i said this is a very bad example of a random number generator a pseudo random number generator but this is the same thing that the library uses so i meant to do this to show you that the pseudo random number generator prng that the library uses will actually repeat itself after some point okay so it will also repeat itself but the difference in our random number generator and the difference between the library one is that they use very different values of a b and m so they they take prime numbers they take they take extremely large numbers so we're able to get a lot of random number before it gets to repeating itself and then it appears random to the eye and again obviously the seed keeps on changing so that every time the person runs the code again the number will be different so that this is it this is what the libraries use except the numbers of a b and m that they use are very different and m is generally 2 to the power 32 to keep the range of number between 2 and 2 to the power 32 so this is it so you can take this algorithm home you can try to create your own pseudo random number generator by putting different values of a and b and m and see when it starts repeating itself and in theory this is it this is what the random number generator uses in our libraries of our programming languages so that's it guys i hope this video was able to give you some insight of how random number generator work and so do subscribe do like the video and that's it for the video